So all the mankind, I don't care how far back you go, have always realized the most important thing in your life is the sun. Bottom line, period. Without the sun, we're dead. We have no food. We're going to freeze to get death. And you think the, the, the ice is thick at the Antarctica? Yeah, wait till you see what the earth is going to look like when there's no sun and there's no heat. <clears throat> mm. So that's the bottom line on the New Testament story of Jesus. Is that it's a story about light against darkness, light at war with darkness. And we know that anything which is evil, we tend to think symbolic, symbolically that it's, it's evil because it's in the dark. You, all the bad things you do are in the dark. All the good things you do in the public, you go out into the public at 12 noon, and whatever you're doing in the public, the world can see you. Everyone's in the light, and everyone can see what you're doing, so you're not doing something evil. Obviously, you're trying to do something of very good. You want people to see it, so you're doing it in the light. <clears throat> and we now we have those terms we use. That if you're doing something evil to trick someone or or you know, create some kind of a criminal element. You're doing it in the dark. You're doing something which is very evil and doing something in the dark. So therefore, that which is evil in man's world has become known as the darkness. And we live in the dark. But So those people who are in the dark are evil and criminal, and they're doing dark, dark deeds. But people who are doing things for the human race and trying to help the human family, they are in the light. So we say they're saintly. They are filled with light. And so they are brilliant. And they are, you know, they're shedding their light on mankind. And so the bottom line is there's a war been going on from day one. I don't care how far back you can go into history. Day one, there's always been a war going on on the air between truth and darkness, truth and the lie, real and not real, <clears throat> good and evil. And therefore, God's Son is the light of the world, our risen Savior, who is giving his life so that you might live. And then there is something called the Prince of Darkness. Mm -hmm. The Prince of Darkness, his name in Egypt was called Set. S-E-T was the God of Darkness in the ancient Egyptian world. And so Set was the Prince of Darkness. And today we say it gets very dark in our world at sunset. <clears throat> so I said at the beginning there's been about Four basic concepts upon which religion has been based uh, for thousands of years. One, and it's, it's very difficult for me to think about which one started first. I'm not really sure which one began first, but the four of them uh, is one, the lunar cult. <clears throat> the ancient world had a very big time with the moon because mankind was fascinated with the moon. And so the moon being lunar, there was a lunar cult, a cult of people on the earth who really placed a lot of importance on the moon. It had some kind of a mysterious effect on us, and some kind of a strange, mysterious presence at night sitting out there all by itself in the, in the space. And in our in our you know, uh, our, our uh, what do you call it, solar system. Right. So, therefore, humans would see at night the moon, especially in the Middle East, in, in what we call Egypt, and the Middle Eastern countries, the Arabic countries, <clears throat> they were big on moon worship. Not that they worshiped the moon, but they worshiped the idea that the God of darkness was set and that the moon represented a particular kind of God. And so the moon became very important to the Arabic world. And since the so-called Arabic world was the home of Judaism, supposedly, in that area of the world, <clears throat> Judaism itself was based on moon worship. 
And when you get into moon worship, again, we're talking about symbolism. <clears throat> and, uh, and Moses, Moses was a lunar deity. Moses was not an actual man who actually lived. No, Moses was a word in the Egyptian for a moon god. And so he was a leader of a moon cult. And so the Hebrews learned about the moon cult, and they became very inv involved with the moon cult. So that today, the Hebrews today, Jews today, still hold sacred the moon. And there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole belief system about the new moon and the quarter moon, the first quarter, the last quarter, the new moon. And the full moon, it's all very important in Judaism because mm -hmm. Judaism is connected to the Middle Eastern religions. So moon worship was one of the different cults. And, of course, the sun was a solar uh, presence. Uh, you know, we talked about that already. So the sun god uh, was Ra, and so we take the word Ra, R-A, and put a Y onto it, becomes sun ray. Ray is the sun ray, known as sun ra. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> the, the, the sun god in Egypt was called a term, an official term for the sun god in Egypt was Amun, A-M-E-N. <clears throat> Amun Ra. Amun Ra was the sun god. And so today, when Christians are in church, when they're praying to God's Son, the light of the world, at the end of their prayer, they say, Amen. <clears throat> Why? Because that's the way the Son God of Egypt was spelled. A-M-E-N hyphen R-A. Sun Ra. Or Amen Ra. <clears throat> or Amen Ray. And so... The bottom line on all of this, I'm just trying to lay out the foundations for understanding how the sun has brought us into a religion we call Christianity. And therefore, the sun represents light, L-I-G-H-T, and life, L-I-F-E. And so this is where the religion of Christianity really takes off and you begin to really understand Christianity when you understand that the sun, most important thing the sun does for us besides keeping us alive and keeping our earth warm, the most important thing that the sun accomplishes for us humans <clears throat> is to give us light. L-I-G-H-T. Without light, we can't see. We wouldn't be able, we won't be around the earth very long. And so therefore, he is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Amun Re, Amen Ra, was the god of light, the god of the sun in the ancient Egyptian world. And the, and the sun has dominated all the religions of the world. All the different religions of the earth have always used the symbol of the sun. And, and more importantly, all institutions from the police department, fire department, city hall, military, universities, restaurants, I don't care what kind of business or institution the human race has come up with, Always the sun is part of the symbol of all corporations, companies, institutions, colleges, universities, police departments. The sun is the king of kings and lord of lords. I don't care how important you are as a president or a king or a prince or a princess, your symbol in your government is a sun. Therefore, we say God's Son, the light of the world, is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Why? Because everybody on the earth uses the sun as their symbol. If you're royalty, you are glowing as royalty. And so <clears throat> you begin to see how the story becomes part of the life of the human race. And it begins to grow. Now, the bottom line of all of this is very important, and that is this. 
Keep in mind that the light of the world represents light, which means intellectual and spiritual enlightenment. People who are ignorant, ill-informed, and couldn't care less are ignorant and ill-informed because they have inside of them no light. They live their whole life in darkness. They don't understand what's going on. They don't read. They don't care. They don't think about it. All they do is watch a ball game, they drink their beer, and they couldn't care less about understanding why things are the way they are. They don't question anything. And so, therefore, when you talk with someone, he doesn't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. We say things like he's really in the dark. This guy's in the dark. Mm. But when you are in the presence of someone who is extraordinarily bright and very intelligent and fascinating to listen to, we say this guy is brilliant. Brilliant means he's very bright. <clears throat> the other guy next to him has no light. He, can, he can't even find his way out of a paper bag. He's so far in the dark. But the other guy is absolutely brilliant, is extremely bright. <clears throat> And so that's the way uh, Christianity was based on. And before Christianity existed in the Roman Empire, that's why today the Catholic Church feels it gave to the world Christianity. And that's why the Catholic Church today and the Pope actually believe, the Christian Catholics believe that it was Rome that gave to the world Christianity. When in point of fact, that's not true, because the ideas expressed in Christianity were already well formed and they were well established in the Roman Empire before Christianity ever existed. There was a religion in the Roman Empire for many, many years before Christianity ever came on the scene, and it was called Mithraism, <clears throat> Mithraism was a very powerful religion in the Roman Empire. Everybody knew about the religion of Mithra. He was the son of God. He was God's son, the light of the world. He was our risen savior. He had he was born of a virgin and he died on a cross and he was resurrected after three days and he came back to life and he died to give mankind life. And so the whole story, again, going back further than Christianity, was, was Mithraism. So it's just still the same story of the worship of the sun. And so... Mm. And on, on another the, nearby continent, uh, Jordan, because you mentioned Egypt before, uh, I, I think it would be appropriate to mention Horus here as well, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. Horus was a name, the personal name, of the sun god <clears throat> in Egypt. Officially, he was referred to as Amun-Re, or Amun-Ra, R-A. As I said, we, in the English world, we put a Y onto it. R-A-Y, Ray, like a sun ray. But it's actually no Amun-Ra, R-A. And Amun-Ra, his personal name was... Uh, Horus, H-O-R-U-S. And so Horus, uh, it was said that Horus walked across the sky, that lucky old sun. That's all he does every day is he just walks across the sky, mm. and he brings light to the world, and his name was Horus. And so the idea was in ancient Egypt, when Horus popped up in the east on the eastern horizon, he was called Horus of the first step. And then a little later, Horus moved up higher. Now he was Horus of the second step. Right. And later on, he moves up higher, Horus of the third step. When Horus on the, on the sixth step was directly overhead, it walks across the sky. <clears throat> when it walks across the sky on the sixth step, it was now Horus of the sixth step. He's directly overhead. He now becomes the most high God. Now he's known Horus is the most high God. We see that term in scripture, the most high. 
Why? Because the sun doesn't get any higher than 12 noon over the top of your head. Right. It's the most high God. It don't get any higher than 12. And so <clears throat> Horus is, a, is the most high God. So he walks across the, uh, the sky in 12 steps or 12 Horuses. So what we did in the English world, we take H-O-R-U-S, Horus, and change the U and the R, interchangeable the U and the R, and make it H-O-U-R-S, becomes 12 hours, not 12 Horus, 12 hours. And so the lucky old sun walks across the sky every day. And so if you want to say, if you want to make this story into something believable about the human life on the earth, we would say that God's son, the light of the world, uh, is his name as Horus or Hours. He walks across the, the sky in 12 hours. And as he walks across the sky, he brings light into the world. And so the word light is Lucius. Uh, it's it's called Lucius or Lux in Egypt. Lux was the light, or Latin was Lu, Lucius. Therefore, in mythology, the ancient mythology, George Lucas treats us to the story of Star Wars with Luke Skywalker. Luke is light and walks across the sky. So we have Luke Skywalker. And he ultimately will meet at when he is at the twelfth step, at the end of the day, the twelfth step. Luke Skywalker meets the Prince of Darkness, Darth Vader, who wears the black robe and the black cape, and and he obviously is the heavy. He's the evil, the evil Prince of Darkness, and so that's why it's called a Star Wars. It's a war going on in the heavens between. Luke Skywalker, the sun that walks across the sky, and then and then the god of darkness, uh, Set S E T. So therefore, Luke Skywalker meets Darth Vader or Sun Set. So this is why I'm saying that the entire story of Christianity is a encoded story <clears throat> that is telling you that there has been since day one. A war going on on the earth between intellectual enlightenment, intellectual and spiritual enlightenment, man being in the light, or being ignorant and in the dark. There's always been that problem where half the human race is in the dark and they have no idea in the world what's going on. Nobody tells them anything. And their natural, their, their natural proclivity is to just go to work and pay your bills and drink the beer and watch TV and go to the games and entertain yourself and send the kids to college and do whatever you got to do to stay alive. And that's all there is to life. You just wake up every morning and earn money and pay money and pay for everything and just go and drink your beer and watch your television while other people are extraordinarily brilliant minds and they build the world. They they come up with all kinds of ideas about how to run banks, run the world, run computers, build rockets to the moon. So there's always been a war between light and darkness, and that's what the story of Christianity really is, the light of the world, Jesus represents the sun or intellectual, spiritual enlightenment. Now, following that idea, since generally speaking, the bottom line is anything in the Bible that has to do with Jesus in the New Testament, whatever is said to Jesus is what was normally said by the human family about light, about intellectual and spiritual enlightenment. Whatever happens to Jesus in the Bible, that's what happens to intellectual, spiritual enlightenment. Whatever is done to Jesus is done to spiritual and intellectual light. The idea being is that people in the dark will always persecute people in the light because they don't see. They don't have the ability to, to see what the people in the light are trying to educate them. 
And so <clears throat> that's why we have so many different religions and so many different people with all these different ideas about Christianity. They all, I don't know how many thousands of different Christian denominations there are, but they're all different and they all realize that they all have the truth. All the different Christian churches know that they have the truth. Obviously, they have the truth because if they didn't have the truth, they would join a different Christian religion. So the Catholics know that they have the truth and Jehovah's Witnesses got nothing. But the Mormons know they have the truth and Jehovah's Witnesses don't have anything. And so you go down the line, all the different religions believe they have the truth and everybody else is wrong. Obviously, if they even thought about it, but they're so far in the dark themselves, if they ever think about it, the only reason you are in a particular religion is either because you will happen by chance to have been born into it, or you were talked into it, and you joined something. And therefore, that's why you are now said to be a particular religious belief system. But it's not because you have the absolute sovereign truth of the universe. No, it's just where you happen by chance to have been born or who you happen by chance to have married and you join their religion or you got talked into somebody else's religion. <clears throat> and so that's why there's equal amount of people in the world that have no religion because they're thinking about it and they don't want anything to do with religion because they don't believe the stories. And so that's what I'm trying to say. The bottom line on Christianity is an encoded, symbolic story about the life of the Son and the life of the human race. How we humans view our Son as a risen Savior. And He has come into this world and, and He brought light and, and wisdom and knowledge and wisdom and warmth so that we could grow food and stay alive. And so the sun was actually giving life to us so that we could live. So we say God's son died for us on the cross. He died for us. That's right. The sun is dying every day because it's giving away a lot of its energy every day. It's very generous. It's giving his energy to the whole universe. But one day he's going to die because he's giving his life away. <clears throat> now, when you understand the bottom line on Christianity said once and for all is a war between light and darkness in the life of mankind. That's the story of Christianity. Mm -hmm. The war between light and darkness, between intellectual, well-read understanding of life and the light and you have the light of the world. You are you are carrying light inside of you. And that's why Jesus said, if you're filled with light, you don't cover it up. You put it up on the mountain and let the whole world see that you are in the light. 